Good evening. This is Akashmani. I am Sanjay Maktu with the news at 9. The headlines. India and China reach agreement on patrolling arrangements along line of actual control in eastern Ladakh. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to embark on two-day visit to Russia tomorrow to attend BRICS summit in Kazan. Government to extend regional air connectivity scheme, Uran, for 10 more years, plans to make hoax call menace affecting flight operations a cognizable offence. Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushadhi Pariyojana achieves remarkable sales worth 1,000 crore rupees this month. Severe cyclonic storm Dana likely to make landfall between Puri and Sagar Island on intervening night of Thursday and Friday, Centre assures Orisha and West Bengal governments of all possible assistance. India and China have reached an agreement on patrolling arrangements along the Line of Actual Control, or LAC, in eastern Ladakh. Briefing the media in New Delhi today, Foreign Secretary Vikram Misri said, this agreement will result in resolution of tensions that began in 2020. He said elaborate discussions between both the sides resulted in an agreement on patrolling arrangements. We've been in discussions with Chinese interlocutors, both at a diplomatic level, through the WMCC, and at the military level as well, through meetings of the military commanders at various levels. As a result of the discussions that have taken place over the last several weeks, an agreement has been arrived at on patrolling arrangements along the line of actual control in the India-China border areas. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar has lauded the agreement between India and China on the patrolling arrangements along the LAC in eastern Ladakh. Speaking at an event in New Delhi, the minister said that both nations have gone back to where the situation was in 2020. Dr. Jay Shankar said that the disengagement process with China has been completed. He said it is a positive development and the result of patient and persevering diplomacy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will embark on a two-day visit to Russia tomorrow to attend the 16th BRICS summit in the city of Kazan. Mr. Modi is visiting the country at the invitation of Russian President Vladimir Putin. The theme of the two-day summit is strengthening multilateralism for just global development and security. BRICS is an acronym which stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. It has expanded to include Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran and the United Arab Emirates as well. Speaking to Akashwani News in Kazan, India's ambassador to Russia, Vinay Kumar, said, the summit will provide an important platform for world leaders to discuss key global issues. This is a very important summit and uh, on the agenda, foremost place is economic cooperation increasing the voice of the Global South in the international arena, reforms of the global institutions and also cooperation for economic development and sustainable development. Prime Minister Modi will hold a bilateral meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. They will certainly discuss all various issues of bilateral and multilateral cooperation that they had touched upon during the visit to of Prime Minister to Moscow in July. Some more are likely to take place, which we are working on. Briefing reporters in New Delhi today on the Prime Minister's visit, Foreign Secretary Vikram Misri said, the focus of this year's summit is the integration of new BRICS members into BRICS cooperation mechanisms. The Foreign Secretary said, India is a founding member of BRICS and brings great value to the grouping. India brings great value to BRICS and its contributions have played a vital role in shaping BRICS efforts in areas such as economic growth, sustainable development and global governance reform. We place a great deal of importance on our involvement and our activities within the BRICS forum as we view it as a key expression of global multipolarity. Mr. Misri said that on the sidelines of the summit, the Prime Minister is expected to attend a few bilateral meetings. Members of the Indian community, especially students, expressed their excitement at the Prime Minister's visit to the Russian city of Kazan. Our correspondent covering the visit spoke to some of the students. I'm Prani, I'm from Tamil Nadu, and I'm studying MBBS in uh, Russia, Kazan State Medical University. We are so excited to welcome our Prime Minister here. My name is Zakhar Alambur. I am a third year medical student in Kazan State Medical University. I am from Bihar. 
और जैसे ही हमें पता चला कि ब्रिक्स का समिट कजान में होना है हम लोग बहुत एक्साइटेड हैं कि अपने प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी जी से फेस टू फेस लाइफ पहली बार मिल पाएंगे टेक्नोलॉजी Addressing the World Summit organized by a private media outlet today, Mr. Modi highlighted the JAM Trinity: Jandhan, Aadhaar, and Mobile, which provides a robust system for faster and leakage-free service delivery. Bharat ne ek naya model dunia ko diya hai. Bharat ne technology ko democratize karke digital public infrastructure ka naya rasta dunia ko dikhaya hai. Aaj Bharat mein sarkar ek platform banati hai. और उस पर लाखों नए इनोवेशन होते हैं हमारी जनधन आधार और मोबाइल की जैम कनेक्टिविटी सर्विसेज की फास्टर और लीकेज फ्री डिलीवरी का एक बेहतरीन सिस्टम बन गया है प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी मेट भुटरीज प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेरिंग तोबगे इन न्यू डेली टूडे Responding to a social media post by Prime Minister Tobge, Mr. Modi said cooperation between the two countries will continue to get even better in the times to come. This is Akashwani giving you the news for quick news updates round the clock follow us on our X handle at the rate AIR news alerts and for details of these stories and more log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and the news on AIR app The regional connectivity scheme RCS Uran Ure Desh ka aam nagrik completed 8 years today Speaking to the media on the occasion, Union Civil Aviation Minister Ram Mohan Naidu said, "The government is envisioning to take the Uran scheme forward for 10 years." He said, "In the next few years, the centre is planning to start 50 more airports and enhance the capacity of existing airports." Mr. Naidu said that through the scheme, the government has connected remote regions where the possibility of having an airport or air travel was unimaginable. On the hoax call menace affecting flight operations the union civil aviation minister has emphasized that the safety of passengers is the highest priority for the government he said the government is planning to amend the aircraft security rules and the suppression of unlawful acts against safety of civil aviation act 1982 and is considering making hoax calls a cognizable offense On the completion of 8 years of the Uran scheme Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said that the initiative has transformed India's aviation sector The Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushadhi Parijojana has reached a remarkable milestone by achieving sales worth 1000 crore rupees this month The Chemicals and Fertilizers Ministry said this achievement highlights the growing trust and reliance of the people on affordable and quality medicines The ministry said in the last 10 years Jan Aushadhi Kendras have grown 170 times. It said in 2014 there were only 80 Jan Aushadhi outlets which has now grown to more than 14000 covering almost every district of the country. Labor and Employment Minister Dr Mansukh Mandavia launched the eShram portal the one stop solution for unorganized workers in New Delhi today. Speaking at the event the minister said the platform will provide seamless access to different social security schemes to the unorganized workers is ram portal ko one stop solution ke roop mein launch kara gaya hai jisme bharat sarkar ki sabhi yojnaye integrate ho chuki hai taki is desh ke koi bhi shramik ko bharat sarkar ne banayi hui koi bhi yojna ka labh ek single window system se mil payega uske liye suvidha sunichit ki gayi hai The National Democratic Alliance NDA member parties the Janata Dal United or JDU and Chirag Paswan led Lok Lok Janshakti Party Ramvilas LJPR today released the names of party candidates for the Jharkhand Assembly polls the executive president of the JDU Sanjay Kumar Jha said Saryu Rai will contest from Jamshedpur West while Raja Pitar will be the candidate from the Tamar Assembly constituency On the other hand the LJPR has given a ticket to Janardhan Paswan from the Chatra seat. In these three constituencies voting will be held in the first phase of polling on the 13th of November. The Prakash Ambedkar led Vanchit Bahujan Aghadi today announced its fifth list of 16 candidates for the Maharashtra Assembly polls. Prior to this the party had declared candidates for 83 seats. 
Earlier in the day, the Parivartan Mahashakti Alliance, consisting of the Prahar Jan Shakti Party, the Maharashtra Swarajya Party, Maharashtra Rajya Samiti and Swabhimani Shetkari Sangathan, declared its first list of 10 candidates. In Jammu and Kashmir, Pro Tem Speaker Mubarak Gul today administered oath to the newly sworn in Chief Minister Omar Abdullah, along with other elected members of the Legislative Assembly. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Gul said the elected legislators must work collectively for the welfare of the people of the Union Territory. The severe cyclonic storm Dana is expected to make a landfall between Orisha's Puri and West Bengal's Sagar Island on the intervening night of Thursday and Friday with wind speeds of about 120 kilometers per hour. The India Meteorological Department in its latest cyclone bulletin said that well-marked low-pressure area over east-central Bay of Bengal will intensify into a depression by tomorrow morning. IMD scientist Dr. R.K. Jenamani said the depression will then become a cyclonic storm by Wednesday over east-central Bay of Bengal. IMD has forecasted that it is likely to move west-northwestward and intensify into a depression by 22nd morning and into a cyclonic storm by 23rd October and that over east-central Bay of Bengal. After that, uh, it is likely to move northwestward and reach northwest Bay of Bengal of Odisha west Bengal coast by 24th October morning. Thereafter, it will cross North Orisha and West Bengal coasts between Puri and Sagar Island during the night of Thursday and early morning on Friday as a severe cyclonic storm. The IMD has forecast extremely heavy rainfall in most coastal districts and some interior areas of Orisha and moderate rainfall over the southern districts of West Bengal from Wednesday to Friday. Union Cabinet Secretary Dr. T.V. Somanathan today chaired a meeting of the National Crisis Management Committee to review preparedness for the impending cyclone. During the meeting, he assured the governments of Orisha and West Bengal that all central agencies are on full alert and will be available for assistance. Dr. Somanathan advised the states of Andhra Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand also to be prepared to handle any situation due to heavy rainfall. During the meeting, the Chief Secretaries of Orisha and West Bengal apprised the committee of the preparatory measures being taken in view of the cyclonic storm. The National Disaster Response Force has kept 14 teams in West Bengal and 11 teams in Orisha on standby for develop deployment. Relief and rescue teams of the Army, Navy and Coast Guard, along with ships and aircraft, have been kept in readiness. In view of Cyclone Dana, the Orisha government is gearing up for massive evacuation of people living in low-lying areas of the coastal districts. Our correspondent has the details. Chief Minister of Odisha Mohan Charan Maji today chaired a review meeting at Bhubaneswar to assess the state's preparedness for the impending cyclone. He has reassured the public that government is fully equipped to manage the potential impact, emphasizing a firm commitment for ensuring zero casualties and complete evacuation from vulnerable areas. The Chief Minister also discussed the need for quick restoration of essential services for cyclone, including electricity, drinking water and telecommunications with a special focus on uninterrupted power supply to hospitals. Authorities have also been instructed to prevent any black marketing of essential goods during the emergency. The state government has also urged the tourists in Puri to leave the city by tomorrow evening as the holy city is also likely to be severely affected by the severe cyclonic storm. Prakash Das, Akashwani News, Bhubaneswar. In tennis, India will host four ATP Challenger Tour events in February next year, starting from Chennai. The All India Tennis Association confirmed that after Chennai, the next three tournaments will be held in Bengaluru, Pune and Delhi from February 10 to March 2nd. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. India and China reach agreement on patrolling arrangements along line of actual control in eastern Ladakh. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to embark on two-day visit to Russia tomorrow to attend BRICS Summit in Kazan. Government to extend regional air connectivity scheme Uran for 10 more years plans to make hoax call menace affecting flight operations a cognizable offence. Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Oshadhi Pariyojana achieves remarkable sales worth 1,000 crore rupees this month. Severe cyclonic storm Dana likely to make landfall between Puri and Sagar Island on intervening night of Thursday and Friday. And that's all in the news at 9. Good night. <laughs> 